Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Christ Our Anchor Presbyterian Church. Welcome to our online watchers, wherever you may be and whenever you're watching. Happy Father's Day to all of you and happy VBS Sunday. It is a special day. It's the first day of summer. We have so much going on at our church. Just a couple of announcements to get us started today. One is that you may have seen in Hopes and Notes, we are starting to ease back into Lack, um, slackening some of the restrictions in regards to our worship service. So if you're here in person today, we're going to start masked congregational singing for the last song only. And if you're uncomfortable with that, you're welcome. We're all going to be standing for that song, so you can come and just chit-chat with me out in the narthex. If you're not ready for that, that is okay, but we're going to allow the congregation to sing for the last song and just keep going from there. And if you have any questions about how these decisions get made by our task force, please do contact me. We certainly want to know what everybody's thinking and what's going to make you feel safe coming back in here in person. Also today, right after this service, we have our monthly Zoom communion service. So if you're at home and you wanna hop on over to Zoom, that link is provided in the online worship bulletin. It's just a 15 or 20 minute service, maybe not even, where we all can see each other's faces the way we would if we were in person for communion. So it feels more like that fellowship time. So anyone's invited to join us for that 11 a.m. today. Also, next Sunday, we are so, so excited for a special event that we're calling COA Unplugged. It is an event that is particularly geared towards trying to get some of you younger families back here because it's all outdoors. So we're praying for good weather. If it is not good weather, we'll have a rain date. But after the service, after the 10 o'clock service at 11 a.m., we're going to go outside, the kids can play on the playground, and we're all gonna bring lunches and listen to the band play an acoustic set for us. We've been missing them. It's gonna be so much fun. COA Unplugged. Anyone's welcome, so bring friends, bring a blanket, bring your kids. We hope we get to see you guys there. And now, a couple of people I'm going to invite up for special announcements for you. Heath, do you have an announcement about Navy football, my friend? I do. You've seen the announcement now for several weeks, and the good news is, is that we've made the, the 20 body count minimum to get to the, the ticket discount. But there are still two games that are kind of running neck and neck and so I would encourage you, if you haven't signed up yet and are interested, please do sign up this week. This is the last week. A week from tomorrow, I'm going to the ticket office and we're getting our tickets. So um, again, don't, uh, don't carry. And the final announcement is about VBS Sunday and this upcoming Vacation Bible School this week. I'd like to invite up our Christian educator, Debbie Barber, for that special announcement. Good morning, everyone. It's my favorite week of the year, besides maybe Christmas. And, but anyway, it is Vacation Bible School week this week, and I am thankful for our community of believers who are going forth to help spread God's words to the families in our church and in our community. Uh, there are a couple of opportunities. We are looking to give um, a light meal for the volunteers that have signed up. Um, so if you can provide that, there is a link in our hopes and notes to the uh, sign up genius. If you have questions, you can just email me directly or give me a phone call at the church. Um, but the big thing is just pray, pray for this program. Pray for good weather, it's all outdoors. So we are hopeful that we will be able to hold every session that we have planned. Um, it's gonna be a great week and thank you for helping us make a world of difference. Our opening prayer this morning is by Nathan Birma. I would invite you to join me as we read it together. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, the whole earth is full of your glory. In the beginning you created, and day by day you sustain the entire cosmos. Lord, this Father's Day, 
we are reminded that you reveal yourself to us in your word as Abba, Father. You are not just our ruler, but our parent, not just our creator, but our nurturer. May we remember that no one name, image, or idea can contain who you are. We thank you today for the gift of fathers, many of whom guide and enrich our lives, and for the gift of fatherhood, in which we are called to image your selfless love. Lord, we also realize that Father can be a difficult name to call you for many, yet we know that you are a parent who can never disappoint us or let us down. We pray to God the Father through Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Barber, the Christian educator here at Christ Our Anchor. And today is a, a special day because we are talking in this summer series about the Holy Spirit and her influence on all of us. And today we talk about the story of Pentecost. And I thought it was very appropriate that it was on VBS Sunday because as VBS is one of our mission projects where we try to speak and reach out to the community, that the Pentecost story is the Holy Spirit touching the disciples with the tongues and flames, with the flames and the tongues so that they could speak to everyone. So part of our VBS this year is that we're, it's a green theme. We're thinking about how we can be stewards to the earth and stewards to each other. And so part of our lesson plan is going to be a body prayer from the Interfaith Partners of the Chesapeake. And I want to invite anybody who is willing to stand with me to learn the prayer to do so. So if you're at home, come on and stand up. If you're here and you want to learn. So we're going to start with our feet slightly apart and we're going to reach down and we're going to say, we are rooted and grounded in love. So let's repeat that. We are rooted and grounded in love. And then we're going to reach up to the sun that's the source of light and life saying, we praise God, creator of all the universe. We praise God, creator of all the universe. And then we stretch our arms out to each other and say, we give thanks for this community. So let's start that because it's a little bit long. We give thanks for this community and the whole community of creation. And the whole community of creation. Amen. You all did awesome. Thank you for joining me. And if anybody wants a copy of the body prayer to take home, just see me after church. Or you can send an email if you're out there in the online world. All right, thank you. It's my turn again for the scripture reading. Our reading this morning is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 6, and then continuing in chapter 19, verses 1 through 6, starting in Acts 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Continuing then in chapter 19. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior region and came to Ephesus where he found some disciples. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, into what then were you baptized? They answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. 
word of the Lord. so grateful for that song of reflection it feels like it really seals in the scripture and helps prepare us to think together so thank you Mike for that thank you I've decided to start these sermons in this series the same way every week I want you all to breathe in slowly and deeply take a moment with me to do that breathe in and out remember the Holy Spirit she is there within you this morning, waiting for you, waiting to fill your life, just like that breath filled your lungs. But you know, as compared to this peaceful image of the Spirit as breath, or even the comforting image of the Holy Spirit as the advocate last week, this week's image of the Spirit is a little bit more wild. I would compare our thoughts this week about the Spirit to how it feels to be in the presence of a bunch of children playing pretend. 
after eating big pieces of cake. That's how it feels to me, that this spirit energy is just wild and contagious and intense and probably a little overwhelming if you're not one of the ones playing. That is the spirit who shows up at what we call Pentecost. Our Youth Sunday this year was on Pentecost Sunday, and so we're revisiting that important story today. Pentecost happened 50 days after Easter, and we celebrate it usually as the birthday of the whole church, not just COA, the big C, global church. Sometimes in regular years, COA will even have birthday cake and we'll sing and we'll make a big thing of it. But this birthday was not just the birth of the institutional church, like the committees and the bylaws and the denominations. No way. This was the birth of something wild and new. And if I make it sound a little bit scary, it was. What actually happened at Pentecost was a whole story beyond what you heard today. You remember Jesus had been executed on the cross, a very public and shameful death. And it seemed like this new faith movement that he built was coming to an abrupt and violent end. But then, three days later, against all odds, Jesus was resurrected. He walked the earth again, fully alive. But not for long, because he appeared to his disciples. They were so excited to see him. And then he says he's going to ascend into heaven. He's going to leave them again. And he told them to go back to Jerusalem, back to the place where all these traumatic events happened. Go back there and just wait together for the Spirit. And they didn't even know yet what that would mean. It was very scary. So much unknown. But they did what Jesus said. That's what they were doing when this story started. It's all that they knew to do. They came together, all in one place, and they waited. Those waiting times are really tough, aren't they? We have those. The exam has been taken, but it hasn't been graded. The votes are all in, but they haven't been counted. The blood has been drawn, or the MRI has been done, but the results aren't back yet. Or maybe even something good, three little magic words slip out of your mouth to someone new. I love you. And then you're just waiting in an agonizing moment to see if you'll hear them back. It's those kinds of waiting times, those in-between times, where what's behind us feels hard and we want to move forward, but we can't quite see the road ahead of us yet. We have to wait to see what will unfold. We can't make the next thing happen. It's not up to us. We just wait. That's the moment that these disciples were in. That's what was happening when they entered the story today. There was no church yet, but still they got together. And that's when it happened. She happened. The spirit broke in, or rather she blew in like a mighty wind. And the way to make this real to me is always just to picture if it happened here. Truly, like on this beautiful Sunday, you can even close your eyes and try to imagine it if you want. A beautiful Sunday that seems like any other. You've chit-chatted with your friends next to you. You're sitting quietly, lost in your thoughts, planning what to buy at the grocery store maybe, maybe trying to focus on God, and then all of a sudden this wind blows through here, maybe knocking over some chairs and knocking your nice organized bulletin out of your hand. And then that person on your left is speaking Swahili or something. Oh, and then the person on your right, they're speaking Arabic. And the weirdest thing of all is that you understand what they're saying, but you don't speak Swahili or Arabic. That's really weird. All the chaos of language is happening around you, but somehow it makes sense to you. All of this is what a pastor who I love named Nancy Taylor, she works at the old histo or historic Old South Church in Boston. She calls all this a windy, firing, speechifying hullabaloo. That's what Pentecost was. What came upon the disciples and what can overcome us today in our churches too is something we call the Holy Spirit. That same spirit she is the exact same one still moving among us today. But do you feel her? Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. Unfortunately, a lot of churches forget about the Spirit. 
We worry more about entertainment or about finances or about the number of members, and we forget that we would not even be here. We would not even be a church if it was not for this same spirit. In her book, Searching for Sunday, Rachel Held Evans, who is an amazing young minister and author who died too soon just a couple of years ago, she wrote this incredible book, Searching for Sunday, and she writes about painful, conflicting feelings about the church, about the larger global church. She carries baggage that maybe a lot of us carry, even if we come to church on Sundays, hurt from church life, frustration, unanswered questions, or questions that maybe she felt too afraid to ask, a sense of irrelevance, or that nagging doubt, why does this even matter? But at the same time, she felt this ongoing longing for God and for community, real community. That was still there within her too, amidst those bad, conflicting feelings. She spent her book going to different churches, trying to find a place where God's presence would feel really real. And one funny thing about this book, it cracks me up at least, is that she went to social media trying to find a good title, and she got all these great suggestions, but the one that really cracks me up is, Jesus went back to heaven, and all I got was this lousy church. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Now, don't misunderstand me here. I don't think our church is lousy. But I think all the churches, the big C church, we're often missing something. And I think that something is the spirit. But it's not because the spirit is not here. It's because we're not working with her. Our hearts maybe are not open to her because it's scary. We're focused on other things. They grab our attention. Maybe we've been taught to leave out that spirit, just like the folks in Acts 19. They had no idea that the spirit life could even exist. But part of being open to the Holy Spirit, it also is being open to each other. And we're really relearning how to do that in 2021, aren't we? Being open to each other. It's no accident that the main thing the spirit did on Pentecost was to bring unlikely people together across a big, wide swath of difference. That was a real miracle, wasn't it? that people of different nationalities and races, genders and opinions were brought all together and suddenly they could communicate and understand each other. Wouldn't that be a miracle today too? The Holy Spirit broke through these barriers, especially through the language barrier. That's what the story emphasizes. And it's because language and words are a big deal. Language can draw us together or keep us apart because words really do have power. The history of religion includes a lot of baggage that I mentioned, like that Rachel was wrestling with. For instance, for too long, we used words and language to keep people out or to keep them in their place. People who couldn't read or who couldn't read Hebrew or Greek or the King's English, they weren't able to read the Bible for themselves. Even now, people will take issues of the issue with versions of the Bible that don't sound formal enough for them. That's not the real Bible, they'll say. Or maybe they'll take issue with people like me who are too casual in their preaching. Maybe they use slang, or even there's preachers who let a curse word slip out to make a point. Ah, oh, heaven forbid! That's the worst thing ever, right? But I don't know, because language can be a barrier. Drawing strict lines between what's acceptable and what's not, it can do that. Or... It can be a connective point. So maybe some of those preachers or Bibles or songs that would offend you are just what another person needs to get God's presence to feel really real to them. And isn't that important? I think it's interesting to take note too that Pentecost is not God taking away all of the difference. The spirit, she did not change all of these languages into one universal, uniform language. Instead, she just made it so that the church could understand all the different languages. It connected them across difference, so the difference was made sacred. God's dream for us is not that we all become the same. Pentecost is an invitation to allow the Spirit to make those differences sacred. So, question here, is that something that we want? 
Is that something that we actually long for in our spiritual journey or in the church? And that might seem like a silly question because it sounds like a good thing, right? But remember, if this Holy Spirit energy is like that wild energy of those kids on a sugar high, maybe we do want the joy and excitement, but we don't want all that disruption. We may not want to be stirred up or turned upside down. We may not be ready for any more change. But can we actually have one without the other? Can we have the joy of the Spirit without the change and the disruption? I don't think it works that way. Pentecost is a package deal, and you have to take both. Our big C church has had to deal with a lot of change. We had to accept a spirit who would move its people to make Holy Scripture available, not just to clergy, but to lay people to learn for themselves. Our big C church had to accept a spirit who would move its people to criticize it and break it down and build it back up, reformed. Our big C church had to accept a spirit who would open us up to clergy who are female, not just male, not just one age or race or even sexual orientation. If we accept this spirit moving among us right here, right now, we have to accept some major change and challenges to what we take for granted. I read this amazing article recently that was called Five Asian Concepts that can deepen our understanding of the Holy Spirit. It was written by a religion professor named Grace Ji Sun Kim, and her father made a point in bringing her, when she was young, to the Korean church on Sundays and to non-Korean church services throughout the week, just to expose her to other ideas. And I loved this article because it was full of brand new ideas to me that I would never have known from my own experience, but they made me feel closer to that spirit that we're talking about today. One of those concepts was young, J-E-O-N-G, young. It's a Korean term that permeates Korean life, and it's hard to translate into English, but at its base, it means love. And the way the author put it, she said, young captures the essence of love and affection between people that is sticky and inseparable, like honey between our fingers. Young will bring you back together. It diminishes the I and the confines that are attached to it and blurs the boundaries between people. That author compares that idea, young, to what we mean when we talk about the Holy Spirit. So I ask you, can we be open to a spirit like that? This openness to the spirit, it guarantees our ongoing spiritual growth but it's also a witness to the world. Make a world of difference. Do you think that that young lady, Rachel Held Evans, is alone in being turned off or turned away by the church? We know she's not. In my experience in ministry, that's with churches, prisons, college campuses, hospitals. I cannot even count the number of people who long for God's presence, but have concluded that it cannot be found among us organized religious folk. And doesn't that make you sad? Because it doesn't have to be that way. We can be a witness to a different reality, to a community where all viewpoints are welcomed for learning, where no one is the expert, where the rejection of people for any reason is rejected. One thing that we all hold in common across all of our differences today is that none of us will ever physically see Jesus. We didn't live when he lived but we can see the representations of Jesus in each other, the people who still have his spirit here on earth and live their lives moved by her. I'd like to end this sermon today with this quote. It's from a 16th century nun named Teresa of Avila, but it is as true today as ever before. She says, Christ has no body but yours, no hands, no feet on earth, but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks with compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses the world. Yours are the hands. Yours are the feet. Yours are the eyes. You are his body. Christ has no body now, 
but yours. Amen. I just wanted to give a little intro here as we think about the sermon, as we listen to this next song. It is VBS week, and so in honor of that, we're doing a special VBS song that has been a favorite over the last few years called Even When the Lions Roar. So as we think about how God shows God's presence through all of creation, some of the ways God is present is scary, like a wind, like a lion, but God's presence is still there if we can be open to it. And thank you, Debbie, for picking that out. That is a true favorite. The kids are going to love dancing to that this week and remembering that song. We come now to a time in our service where we remember all the things going on in our life and in our world that maybe you were trying to put out of your mind to be here and focus on God, but you can bring those things in the doors with you. You can bring them to church because they matter to God and they matter to us. And so if you have a prayer concern or a joy that you want to share in community, we hope that you will fill out one of these cards if you're here and leave them with me, email the church office or myself, or put them into the Facebook comments because we would love to pray for you. Let's just take a quiet moment and remember what we want to put before God today. Father God, we are mindful today that you have been continually with us. You have nurtured us and cared for us. You are someone that we could talk to when maybe we could talk with no one else, and you've never let us down. We thank you for that relationship, and we pray for all of those today who are celebrating a father, who are maybe grieving a father, who are missing a father in their lives, God. We pray that you would be especially present to all of those people and bless all the wonderful fathers out there today. We also pray for the concerns and joys that have been named in our community. 
We pray for Barbara Perry, one of our virtual watchers, who is continuing to manage a recurrence of her cancer. We pray for Dave and Margaret Williams' friends, Sally and Joyce, who are having serious physical concerns. We pray for Debbie Swigert's sister-in-law, Dee, receiving treatments for recurrence of cancer at Sloan Kettering in New York City. We pray with Diane Ray for all of the Capital Gazette families dealing with such a difficult third anniversary of the shooting coinciding with the beginning of the trial. Please be with them, Lord. Please make peace in our nation with all of these shootings. We pray for Ginger Boyd, the daughter of longtime late members of our church, Hal and Mary Jane, who is traveling back to the U.S. in August for her sister's wedding and planning on many language and translation workshops around Africa in the fall for Wycliffe. God, we pray for Megan Chicaroni Preston for her father receiving treatment for a cancer that was recently found. We pray for answers and manageable treatment plans going forward for his healing. We pray for William and Joni Mumau's son, Bert Leatherman, going through particularly difficult and challenging times. Please be present with him, Lord. Guide him with your love and your wisdom. God, we pray for... Helen Kelly's brother, John, who had a stroke recently and lost his vision, we pray that you would help him continue to heal. We pray for Rich Kelly, who is dealing with several medical tests and treatments during this time. You know exactly what is going on with him, Lord. Please be with him. And we give you thanks for the many celebrations, God. We thank you for Ann Hatcher's mother celebrating her 98th birthday this week. What an incredible joy. What a wonderful witness to life, God. Thank you for bringing her this far, and we pray that she does feel loved and celebrated. And we also pray with thanksgiving for the Broadneck Girls Lacrosse team that we found out won Maryland State Championship this week. We thank you for their coach, Katie Kelly, who's one of our church members, and several of our COA girls are on that team. We pray that they would celebrate their hard work and accomplishments and know how proud everyone is of them. And for all of the things on our hearts, God, we let go, we loosen our grip on those things. They are not ours to control or to plan. We give them to you for your love and your spirit to guide. And we pray all of these things in the name of your son, Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We take this time as our service moves towards its close to reflect on what we have heard today and on the way God's spirit is moving within us. What might we be called to give of our lives and ourselves? What might we be called to add to our lives to enrich us or let go of to make room for something else God might have in store? No matter where the spirit may lead us, this time of offering is not just about our giving, but about remembering all that we have received from God's hand. And so we say, thank you. My blessing and benediction for you is, of course, focused on the Spirit. Spirit of God, may we breathe in and hold your love within us. May we breathe out and share it with the world.
Spirit of God, may we breathe in and hold your peace within us. May we breathe out and share it with the world. Spirit of God, may we breathe in and hold your life within us. May we breathe out and share it with the world. Amen. Now we're starting this new today. And if you all would like to join in singing this last song, I'd invite you to stand as you are able. If you don't want to stay in the sanctuary for singing, you can join me out in the narthex and have a wonderful Sunday. <laughs>